thinking about it. Ah, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Wonder Series Wednesday. Today is your chance to wonder what things would be like if you looked at things in your life from a different perspective, if you thought about them differently, um, if maybe, mm, I don't know, you opened your mind and changed your mindset. What would life be like? Who would you be? What would you create? And ultimately, how could this help you live a joy-filled, healthy, happy life with ease? That life that you have been dreaming of uh, that's close, but is still just at your fingertips. Hi, everyone. I'm Denise Stiegel. I'm the CEO and curator at livinghealthylist.com and your host for the Wonder Series. So the last few weeks, we've been focusing on ourselves, um, self-improvement, self-help, and how we can basically get a little bit better every single day. And so this is going to be a really fun conversation. My guest today is my dear friend, Lori Bryant Woolridge, who is going to have us thinking inside the box to explore what is inside. Uh, Lori is a certified coach. She's an author, a speaker, an angel scribe, and a love connoisseur. <laughs> She is a serious cloud watcher, which, Laura, you'd be disappointed because there's not a cloud in the sky here in Minnesota today, but I'll keep an eye out for a few. Um, she's also an amazing confidence peddler, self-worth builder, a joyful flirt, and a mother, a mother of two incredibly talented grown-ups. Lori is also one of our founding members here at Living Healthy List, and she is one of the most insightful, intelligent, and beautiful women that I know. So Lori, welcome. I'm so excited to talk to you. I always enjoy our conversations. Thank you. So do I. It's always like, you know, just coming in and having a really great and truly heartfelt chat. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. So we've been talking about, you know, getting a little bit better um, every day. And, you know, the last 18 months have been a challenge for everybody. Um, and I think a lot of people are in a place where they want something new. They want something different, um, but they're not sure how to do it, if it's right. Or I think the biggest challenge is they really aren't giving themselves permission to really go for it. Yeah. So how do, how do we, we kind of look at where we are, what we have, where we, where we are and where we want to be and how do we kind of say, okay, it's my life. I want to live it the way I want to live it. Yeah. It, um, it lovely words and sentiments and something that we all think about, want, crave, it just, absolutely have a hard time trying to figure out how to get there. So um, one of the things that I do when we talk about from the inside out, and, and that's exactly what I do, I, I, I call it essence coaching, because it's about essence, the essence of who we really are. And that really is your soul. So I really try to coach to the soul to really make the mind, body, soul connection very integrated, whatever. And that's a huge part of this self-improvement mm -hmm. bubble and our, our, you know, this whatever it is puzzle that we're trying to figure out because we approach it so much from improve my mind, you know, learn a new language, you know, study the classics, whatever. And we look at it self-improvement from our bodies and our physical sense and we work right. with diets and exercise and all those things. We, I can't tell you one person that, you, if you talk to 10 people, you'd be lucky to find that one that says, and I'm really going to work on my soul evolution and growth. Well, <laughs> right? I know that one person. That one person is you. I, I, exactly. <laughs> and my client. I know one person. <laughs> right. You get in a room full of my clients, you, you'll see that. And what's so interesting, it's the missing piece. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about the mind, body, soul connection or spirit connection. But we really don't look at how we can, quote unquote, improve our soul knowledge, our soul selves in order to really integrate them. So we're cooking mm -hmm. on all cylinders. So that's kind of where I come in. I am literally teaching people about the essence of who they are. Mm -hmm. And I'm a love connoisseur and an intuitive love coach because the essence of who we are is a energy and that energy is love. 
So we're always working on that soul level. So having said all that, I will say that I don't like the idea of self-improvement. Yep. Yep. Because, you know, everything is, you know, where your mind goes, your butt follows. And so your thoughts, if you're thinking, I have to improve myself, I have to get better. It is just buying into the subconscious ideas that you have that I'm not enough. You know, something about me needs to be fixed. And it keeps you asking the questions of what's wrong with me. So how can I fix what's wrong with me? But I can't really Mm -hmm. figure out what's wrong with me. So let's start with diet, because if I slim down or whatever, then I'll feel better and I'll know what's wrong with me. But it never really works out that way. It's a very good point, because a lot of times, you know, we talk about, you know, you know, being in the positive, positive mindset. And when you said that to me earlier, I went, yeah, that's actually really negative, isn't it? It really is, because it's look, we feed we are pretty much programmed to feed our negative thoughts and fears to see only our lack um, as opposed to everything that we have. So again, self-improvement means I need to be better. And if I'm better then something will change. So again, as we're always trying to switch mindset Mm -hmm. because your thoughts create your beliefs, which create your perceptions, which create your reality. How about we tie it to self growth or soul evolution? (laughs) How about we, instead of improve, let's level up. Instead of fix what's wrong, let's, and asking ourselves what's wrong, let's ask ourselves, what can I do differently? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of saying, you know, why can I ever, nothing ever works out, you know, what I need to change and be better. Let's talk about who I'm becoming and how do I match thoughts and actions to that person? I like that person. Yeah. And that's, I do. that's an easier person to embrace because you're embracing the possibility instead mm-hmm. of the negativity. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things we've been talking about a lot in just in conversations is the word curiosity. And I think we lose that curiosity when we have it when we're kids and as we get older we tend to kind of it 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 tends to wane but the curiosity i i I think is really important is this curiosity about who we are and i mean truly as you say that essence who who we really are yeah and so why do you think we are we're no longer curious or we're afraid to be curious well because it goes against all the labels Mm that we've either people have put on us or we've put on ourselves based on the roles we play. And so being curious in in a certain mindset is akin to being doubtful, right? Mm -hmm. And doubting who you believe yourself to be. So how much more curious could I be about myself? Because once you let that cat out of the bag, well, we know what happened to that cat. Right. But but the, the truth of the matter is, and we've discussed this on other at other times, is that doubt and belief go hand in hand, mm. that it's what you it's the doubt that leads you and feeds the curiosity. Mm-hmm. So if you're doubting, is, is, is this as good as I can get? Is this the best that I can be? And in not seeing it in, an, again, that negative light, what's wrong with me? How do I get better? But in that pos- positive light, if is it time for me to grow and level up? Then the doubt feeds the curiosity, right? And and the, the important thing about doubt is it is, an, an emo- it is an emotion that we need to listen to, like the rest of our emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, so our emotions are always telling us when we're out of alignment or we're in alignment. Mm-hmm. And so they are important indicators of where we stand at any given moment. I think we're afraid of emotion. Oh, that's yeah. one of those things that, you know, if, it, if it's, if we're emotion, if we show emotion, we're vulnerable. We're not who we, we're not the person we want to show the world. Yes. Well, we grew, we grew up in a culture that prides itself on intellect and mm-hmm. scholarliness and rational thought. And again, 
that's because we're always playing, paying homage to the mind and body. Mm -hmm. But when you bring into the soul, you recognize that the soul is all about emotion and your emotions are your GPS system. They tell you everything you need to know at any given time. But because we judge our emotions mm. as good or bad, negative or positive, we're like, oh, this makes me feel bad. I want to feel it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to play with it. Right. But if we stop judging the emotion and just use it as an aha moment, oh, I'm feeling this kind of way. Well, what am I thinking? What am I doing? What's going on that's making me feel that kind of way? Mm -hmm. Oh, how can I do something different? different? That is where we know that we're out of alignment because I feel funky about it. Mm -hmm. When I'm feeling great and God, this just feels so right. And I'm just happy. And this is, oh, I want to do this again. What am I doing? What am I thinking? How am I behaving? Oh, this is telling me that I'm in alignment with my true soul self. Mm -hmm. So that's why if we want to talk about leveling up and self growth in a way that improves our lives, mm -hmm. not us. Yeah. Then I like we'll, that connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Cause that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. It took me a second to, to see the difference between improve us or in up level our lives. We're up leveling Very ourselves different. to mm -hmm. improve our lives. Mm -hmm. Right. Then that takes all that judgment and all mm -hmm. that I'm not enough. Right. Yeah. It all just the, all the junk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so one, there's one emotion too. I just want to not forget to connect to all this, mm -hmm. which is that emotional feeling of restlessness. Mm. And that is something that we totally, you know, doubt it, it is. A, it's one of those kind of nebulous sort of um, emotions that kind of quiet. It sneaks up on you. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't help you. Um, but it's uncomfortable. And we tend to judge that in a very negative way, right? Mm -hmm. Because we judge, you know, look, I should be satisfied. This is the, I've, this has been my dream job for 15 years. I should be satisfied. Why am I feeling so restless? I've been in this relationship. It's, it's the love of my life. Why do I feel restless, right? And so we, mm -hmm. because restlessness makes us uncomfortable. Yeah. And the truth is, it's your soul talking to you. And as the angel said, direct quote, restlessness is growth in motion. Wow. So when you are feeling restless, again, it's an indicator that you are really ready to level up. Mm -hmm. Right. And, it, and it's supposed, it feels uncomfortable because it's a precursor to change. I was just going to use that word. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't like change. Well, now that we've, we've been talking about the word growth, and I, I really love using the word growth instead of change because, yeah, sure, you know, I mean, nobody likes change. It's uncomfortable. Um, you know, my world, in my world, you know, with food and beverage, you know, people want to change. They, they, they want the result, but they don't want to do the work to make to do the change. So if yeah. we look at it from a, a different perspective in, in when it comes to growth, even in weight loss, you know, we're experiencing new foods, we're experiencing new energy and meeting new people. And again, it's maybe you're, you're, you're losing weight in, in, in during all this, but it's not change. Cause that just, I think as soon as we say change, it just sucks all the air out of the room. Well, because when you think about it, all people think about when they think about change is what I'm losing. Mm, it goes true. to our lack mentality, our mm -hmm. fear, our ego-based fear of not having enough, not being enough, lack. We don't mm -hmm. see, and, and also we create comfort zones, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those comfort zones aren't that comfortable, nor are they that healthy, but it's what we know. We know how to strategize and move within those zones to lessen the uncomfortableness, but still uncomfortable. So again, and let me ask you, you could ask a hundred people and not one person would say, I'm afraid to grow. True. Very true. You could ask that same hundred people. So are you afraid to change? And I bet you get a bigger, much, probably not a hundred percent, but a very large percentage. 
Yeah. So again, mindset mm -hmm. and soul, soul communication. When you are feeling restless, your, your soul is saying, hey, it's time to grow. It's time for us to level up. It's time to first expand and evolve so that we are in keeping with the idea that this whole human experience is supposed to be joy and love and abundance. So let's get on it. Right. Absolutely. So you are gained. So our mindset changes to everything we have to gain. I love, yeah, I love the idea of what we're gaining as opposed to what we're losing or letting go. Let me, let me talk a little bit about soul because before I met you, when, when, when I heard the phrase mind, body, soul, and I don't know if it's my background, but the, I didn't make that connection to, to me and really who I am as a person, as Denise. I always kind of, it, it always seemed to be something that was outside of me because maybe people use the, you know, the phrase mind, body, soul, mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. kind of interchangeably. Yeah. And I saw it more of, you know, a, a, a connection to something outside of me as mm -hmm. opposed to actually connecting to me. Right. Well, that's perfectly understandable because most of our spirit soul talks that happens within the congregations of whatever religion that we are involved in. And, and most religions, the idea of God and divineness and soul and spirit is a three-party middleman kind of situation, <laughs> you know? So um, we don't really get and have ownership of our soul. We are told what our soul is and what it does and how, I know as a, I was raised a Catholic, so mine came down dirty and a sinner. So, <laughs> you know, based on what they're saying. So there's, there's no, um, it's no wonder we don't. So yeah. here's, here's what I will tell you about soul. And these are what, are known as universal truths. And we say universal truths because they have been heard, talked about, passed down, spoken in any culture, in every language, in every, there's some piece of it somehow in just every kind of religious dogma, everything. And so soul is one of those concepts that soul is, it is the essence of who we are. Is people just say it's your authentic self. People say it's your higher self. People um, will, um, you know, they have a lot of different ideas about its its um, purpose and what it is. And all of it is kind of true. But here's what how I became to understand what soul really was. So in downloading angel messages, of course, they talk about what the soul is. And basically the soul is love. And when you, we are a soul, a spiritual soul having a human experience and your soul is kind of like, you know, the computer brain that's plugged into the vehicle mm -hmm. and the vehicle is just your body, right? Mm -hmm. So what's interesting and how I really began to understand this is when I started channeling, I guess you can call it medium and type things where souls that had passed on that were no longer on the earthly plane. Mm -hmm. And I had friends who passed through and would come back and visit me and their personalities as light. And that's how I see them as light, like orbs of light was exactly the same personality as I knew in human or human interactions. So one of my dearest, loveliest friends that was here earthbound with me, um, Mark, he was this really chilled artist and he, uh, he passed on and I, I didn't even know. And I found out later and he came to me about, I don't know, about two or three months after I learned that he had died and his energy came in just like Mark, <laughs> you know, it was just chilled and quiet. And, and so if you could picture it, it's like if you looked at plasma, it's like bright white plasma. Mm -hmm. and it just, it's just energy, like exactly. Mm -hmm. And his would be just like this. And he would, he just, and we had a conversation. It's like, 
I had another friend, Heather, boom, 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 boom. Her energy was like that. And that's exactly how she is. So it really helped me understand it's our kind of personalities, our soul. This is who we are. And so the body really means nothing. And it's the soul that lives forever in that exact unique form. So if we understand that the essence of our soul is love, and we have these different personalities and things that go energy, the personality is just energy, that it keeps us uniquely the same through life. I don't know if that helps. It but- totally does for, for, for two reasons. Um, I've heard the phrase, you know, um, where um, a, a soul living, the, having a human experience. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that many times. Um, I didn't get it until just now. I never understood that. Like I'd hear it. And every time this as one particular person who I follow would say it, I'd kind of roll my eyes and go, okay, I still don't know what that means. Yeah. Now I know what that means. Yeah. And I'll give you another really good example of why soul learning is so important. Right. So um, we all come with less, and we come in our human experience with lessons to learn. And it's the exact same lesson, lifetime and lifetime until you, master the lesson. So I had my spiritual mentor. I same. it's, you know, we all have the same kind of issues that follow us. And in this lifetime, it was like in different relationships and different situations. It was this, I had the same issue as we all do. So I was like, you know what? Let me do a past life reading series with wit. And figure out what is this lesson that has followed me lifetime. And we absolutely, it was the craziest, most fascinating thing. And in different lifetimes that she passed on, I was different things. In many of them, I was a media, a psychic or blah, blah, blah. Um, In in many of them, um, there was this thing about having the feeling of huge responsibility. And in, in most of them, not feeling like I have been able to live up to that responsibility. And those were like all parts of some of my fears as I grow and evolve to different levels, keeping myself back. You know, uh, I think I told you when I was meditating decades ago and they were saying great things are coming. And I'm literally, you know, in half lotus position going, no, not great. You know, good things, good things, literally. Right. And you begin to realize what is this connection? So we come with the same lessons every time in different situations. So that allowed me to see what my soul has been trying to learn. And since I did that, it's so clear to me in every relationship, in every situation that I get in, that I'm feeling the same patterns. I can say, oh, okay, we're going to break this this time and do something <laughs> different. So it's a fascinating thing. And so that's what I try to do is help people understand who they are on a soul level and begin some of that work there, here. It's so interesting because it's so different from what every one of us has ever been taught growing up. I mean, you said you were raised in a Catholic church. My parent, my, my dad was Catholic. My mother um, and my sister and I went to an Episcopal church, which is kind of Catholic light. Um, and I have to say the one thing that I didn't get from church and religion. I didn't get the guilt or the fear. I got the love piece. Like that mm-hmm. was the part that I understood from our, our minister and um, from mm-hmm. our small church back on Long Island. Um, so I, I kind of feel like I've always been a little bit of head of people who are trying to deal with, you know, living a life, raising children, having a career and dealing with guilt. Like I don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's a huge thing. It's one of those, again, sort of wasted emotions that tell you where you are. The last connection I want to make for, for you before I forget. So hopefully people who are listening to this are like, who is this crazy shit? Um, <laughs> and I'm part of our soul cycle here is we come at full of divine love. That's who, that's the essence of divine love. And our journey is to find our purpose and our mission that leads us to the lessons we need to find the self-love necessary 
for us to live and continue to involve in self-love so that by the end of the cycle, there is no disconnect between divine love and self-love. So that the truth is divine love is self-love. Self-love is divine love. And so our goal is always to live and do the lessons to find the love within so that when we are complete, there is no longer any disconnect between the two. And so your spiritual levels of development and growth, you get to different levels and you just keep leveling up. And what I do, talking to angels and dead people and all that kind of stuff, is something that we all are capable of doing. It just all comes down to where you are in your spiritual growth. So that's the soul. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. That's what um, our mission is. That is our, I, wow. Laura, you've got me speechless. <laughs> I know. It's like, what is this? Swami Salami stuff. How do you think my friends feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think it's really interesting because I think so many of us are, are lost. Even those of us that don't realize it. So many yeah. people are lost. And this is a piece that you know, we, everyone's lost. They're looking for something outside, you know, somebody else, somebody can help right. them. Um, some, you know, the next self-help book, I say that as I've just finished exactly. writing my book. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Um, but, you know, we are, I think we're all always looking outside ourselves. And I think one of the things I tried to do with, um, with uh, writing Healthy Living, Happy Life, the um, the subtitle is An Achievable Goal for All of Us. Mm -hmm. And this is a piece, and this is maybe in book two, Lori. Um, this, that, the soul piece is the piece that is missing because that's not, I can't, I can't talk about that. That's something that you you talk about and understand this is something that i now know that i need to better understand yeah and i think that anybody who's listening to this right now some of you might be saying this is cray cray some of you might be saying this is interesting but i still don't quite get it and some of you might be really it may be resonating with you all of that is perfectly legit because as the angels say do not doubt what you don't understand because like the rose, it, your understanding will open petal by petal. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes they're so prosy. And then sometimes they're just like, girl, get off of it. Just do this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but that's the truth. What resonates the most is where you're ready to begin. So if, you, if it resonates with you only in the sense that this is really interesting, I kind of think I want to find out more. That's where you are. And that's where you start. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's like, wow, you know what? I've been hearing this. I've been seeing this. I'm da da da. You sh it's all there. And then we take that doubt. Here's what I believe. If any of what you heard gave you just a little niggling of doubt, that's a great thing because doubt is going to help you hone. It's going to spark the curiosity. It's going to spark the exploration. And it's going to hone what you have thought you believed into something that you now know. So even when I started with this stuff and it was all kind of new to me, it's like, what is this? And I will say that the F word was part of that. <laughs> it was like, and then you just have to sit with it a while. And then it becomes comfortable in that you can begin to hone the curiosity. So doubt is a good thing. Restlessness is a good thing. But remember where it's coming from. It's not coming from dissatisfaction of what you have. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the in your soul's questing for what it knows you are, is available out there for you. It's that growth, that growth piece. And it's funny. I mean, whenever I've felt restlessness in my life, when I look back and think about it now, there was something like I was going to be jumping forward with something whether it was, um, you know, a personal thing, a business thing or a work, you know, career, there was always this kind of, all right, what is this about? And then yeah. something, something, you know, kind of came across my desk, you know, like, you know, I, I met Mark, you know, the day that I met Mark, like it was kind of one of those weird things. Like I had been feeling 
and I guess the, the, the word was restless and not that I, I mean, things were good in life. I had a good job. I had my own place. I, you know, things were good, but there was something. Yeah. um, And I couldn't put my finger on it. And then when I met Mark and started to get to know him, um, when I think about it now that started to go away and he and I didn't get married for two years after that. But it's interesting to look back now, like that restlessness was not, it wasn't so prominent. And maybe it was because I was learning and growing and moving towards something. And the thing about that's exactly what happens. You're, you feel the restlessness and you didn't really do anything about it. You just noted it. Mm -hmm. Right. And the restlessness can become painful when you're not listening to the whispers. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and so everything that we think we have to learn pain, you know, no pain, no gain, everything has to be big hurts to get big helps. That's not the truth. The divine intent is you souls are supposed to be down there living a life, heaven on earth, Mm -hmm. love, abundance, joy. But free will is in there because free will is how you grow. Mm -hmm. And the choices you make by your free will determine what path you're going to follow. The the joke is every single path, whether it's, you know, flowers or rocks and glass are leading you to the same place, Mm -hmm. your purpose and lesson. So it's your choice that says, I can listen to I could feel these restless things instead of being scared of it. Say, where is the area that I have all of this that I'm really happy about? But where is the area that they're trying to level me up? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's time for me to celebrate love with someone. Not just stay caught up in the romantic idea of what love. Mm -hmm. Right? And so when you start looking at it this way, it becomes, whoo, what surprises around the corner? You know, I'm about to level up what's coming <laughs> and as opposed to, you know, being so afraid that, mm-hmm. you know, you can't meet the challenge or something's coming that you're going to lose something or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you. So one of the things that you hear a lot is, you know, and you said something here, you hear the whispers, um, you know, and people say, um, listen to your own intuition. Um is the intuition, is it the soul intuition or is it that somebody else, another soul is kind of helping, you know, like you, you have with the angel scribes, you know, are they giving us messages or is it really like truly your intuition? Like what's the difference, I guess? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so the thing about it is we have a hard time trusting our intuition mm-hmm. because we are trained not to be in touch with our emotions and not to um, trust them over our intellect and rational thought. But intellect and rational thought is just that. We rationalize every damn thing. Mm-hmm. You know there are times when you're saying, God, I really shouldn't do this. This guy is not good for me, whatever it is. And your rational thought that I don't know, you know, and he's not the best, whatever it is, that talks you out of what you know. Mm-hmm. So the bottom line of that is you you know the truth by the way it feels. You're on a soul level, you know the truth by the way it feels. Mm-hmm. And the more you're in touch with your emotions, and the less you judge those emotions and just use them if, as indicators of alignment or out of alignment, the more it is easy for you to. Um, just value and hear what they're saying. You do have outside um, influences and support coming in. And those are all the clairs, clairvoyance, clairsentience, you know, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you need to learn, your soul needs to be reminded, how do they best receive divine guidance? Right? Are you clairaudient? You hear, clairsentient, you feel, claircognizant, you you just know, or clairvoyant, you see. And I used to always say that I'm not very clairvoyant. And then I came to the realization that clairvoyance isn't all about seeing visions. It's about Mm -hmm. visual cues that then are attached to thoughts and inspirations that explain. So we have to learn what our clairs are. 
we all have one or two dominant ones, but we all of them are helpful. And then there are times literally when the angels will give you messaging um, that you need to be able to, you know, we they're, they're whispers, their thoughts, their inspiration. But they're literally coming from angels, spirit guides, things like that. Um, the more open you are to it, the more you hear and see. You know, that's why you can talk about spirit animals. You can talk about, you know, guardian angels. You can talk about the archangels. For my clients, I describe messages for them, the personal angel messages that kind of inform probably a month worth of work. And it's usually, um, you, you know, it's spot on of where they are at that moment. And it's a lot of times emotions that they don't, haven't even acknowledged, you know. So, again, when I first started doing that, I thought it was pretty damn special, but <laughs> then you realize they cut you down really quickly. They'd say, no, it's not special, it just is. And so what I do, everybody can do, has capability to do, is just evolving enough to get to that place. You have evolved to that place, and I think... I would love to get to that place. I'm so, I'm just so intrigued and just so in awe of what you do and, and, and how it just, it just comes to you. And for somebody like me, who's interested and excited, you know, but still at that, you know, on the outside going, okay, how does this work? Wow. This is so cool. Yeah. And so the thing about it is um, the fact that you're interested tells you that this is where your soul is wanting to go to open itself up so that you, um, are privy to all this information. And so much of it makes sense because your whole life purpose is to empower and help and inspire people. And that's what we do with lightworkers. That's mm -hmm. our job to help bring people along. And it, we all have different purposes within it, you know? And one of the things that I know that I do well because that's what they want me to do, it's part of my sole mission is to teach this stuff. And I always say I make the woo-woo relatable. Yes, you do. <laughs> right, yeah, to him, right, to teach it in a way that people can connect to it immediately to their own lives. Mm -hmm. And and then knowing that um, you've heard the cliches, you know, um, everything you need to, all the answers are within. Everything that you need to know, you already have the information. And it is totally awakening up your soul and your ability to hear, whether it's however clear you hear it, mm -hmm. um, so that you can receive it. And the more you love yourself, the closer you get to the divine, the closer you get to the divine, the more light and energy is spread. And that's why loving yourself changes the world. And it opens you up for all this. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. That's what we're supposed to be having. Life is supposed to be fun. Yes, I think we lose fun. that. Um, so, Lori, for those of uh, those of the people who are listening, um, uh, whether they're live or on the replay, um, and they're ready to, they're they're curious. They want more information. Um, I know you have. Um, something, uh, a free gift for, for our audience. Um, so tell us about that and tell us where everyone can get in touch with you. Yeah. So first I'm going to tell you about the no love series that's on the living healthy list Academy. Um, and you can put that in the link so people can, but that's just like a four, um, unit course with videos and stuff to explain to you what love is, it's called no love, K-N-O-W, no love. What is it? The five kinds of love. We talk about self-love. We talk about why we're fearful of love mm -hmm. and how to be love and then to share love. And that's a really great tutorial for you to begin to understand yourself at a soul level, at the essence of who you are, which of course is love. So that's one thing. The second thing is that, yes, I do have a free gift for everybody. So, you know, part of trying to figure out um, and feel better and grow and evolve. We think we have to go to the outside for those kind of things. So I put together a little workbook. I'm like workbook queen. Um, yeah. put together a, a little workbook. Um, for, it's called um, Fake It Till You Make It. It's five fake it till you make it strategies. 
And let me caveat that by saying that fake it till you make it is a strategy, not a lifestyle, um, but ways for you to get your confidence rolling. So one of the exercises is creating your inner diva. And I use the word diva because to me, diva has strength and positivity to it. But I always take iconic, cliched words and make them my own. So for yeah. me, diva means I am deliberate in my thought and my creation. I am inspired by um, the world and people around me. I am vivacious, living life fully and in color. And I am accepting of all I am at this moment and all that I am becoming in the future. So that's the diva. But what I'm showing you to do by unearthing your inner diva is to find the parts of you. You're not creating a role, you're not creating a character, but it's to unearth the parts of you that are already there, that are just dormant and you're not using and bring those to light so that you begin to operate. It's like, you know that phrase, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. It's like, what would Diva do or whatever name you give her? So that when you get into situations, you're operating from an emotional set, a character trait set, and mm -hmm. um, just a, a, a personality that actually is yours. You just are, have been suppressing it in order to be the labels, all that kind of stuff. So that's mm -hmm. one way you fake it till you make it. And I gave, I give you the example of Beyonce in there, how she used Sasha Fierce. So there's that and some other strategies on how to do that. And I will be putting that link in um, the whatever box. <laughs> It goes. Yeah, it, uh, put it, it will put it in the Facebook feed. We'll put it in the uh, the show notes on YouTube. And as soon as we get all of these over to a podcast, it will be there too. Yes. And so then you can find me at www.soulcoach, S-O-L coach dot co, C-O. And if you're interested in all, I have a signature program called Successful Single Ready, which is actually a year long coaching program that I take very successful women who are blowing up life in every area except for love. And we go through and really get to, to the point where they're not looking for love, but they have up-leveled their energy so that they are attracting the exact quality of love that they've been desiring. And that can be found on soul, S-O-L-sexy.co. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. I love how you use the, the, the word soul and, and the way you spell it um, to be soul. And of course, the soul as the yeah. sun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big sun aficionado. Yep. I can see. Um, I love it. Lori, thank you. It's always so much fun talking. You and I could just chat forever. Yeah. Um, but we do need to wrap up uh, for everyone. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us for this episode of the Wonder Series. If you have questions, Definitely, you can um, connect with us uh, through Facebook on the Facebook feed. You can email me um, directly through our website at livinghealthylist.com, and I'll connect you directly there with Lori. And obviously, you can find her at soulcoach.co. And everyone, thank you again. Um, we're here every Wednesday. I think what today was. Every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, until next week, I will leave you with this. Healthy living, happy life. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.